Right, so here we are. We're at the power bank stage again. Now this time, this is the Blue Eti brand new AC200L portable power station. Portable power station. And it has got some power as well. 2,400 watts of output. This is gonna power virtually anything you can imagine in a, um, like a motorhome camper van which luckily I've got a camper van I used this at the weekend excellent really really excellent piece of kit so when you get that you get it through the in the box you get with it I've had these all these all unfolded there's a DC charging cable DC so you can use that from your car charger when you're on your journey there's also an AC charger <laughs> with wires the AC charger is the plug sure where it plugs in a minute and this one is the solar panel charger I don't have the solar panel but even if I did, the weather is really grim and grey, so it wouldn't really, wouldn't really charge it up. You've got grounding screws on it and the documents and all the rest of it. What you can get for the extras, you can get USB-C to USB-C cable output. You can get expansion batteries, different types of expansion batteries, which means get extra power, you know. You just plug it in. Uh, expansion cables, more power cables voltage regulators and the lead acid battery charging cable which means you can charge it up by connecting it direct to your battery of your car with them the crocodile clips nice right, so it's got 2400 watts output unbelievable so I'm just reading through the just reading through all the different bits and bobs. So we'll turn it on. Just one quick press. I've had it charged up. I'll plug it in, in a minute and show you it charging up again though, just to show that it works. DC output. That's for anything with a you know the 12 volt, what you would call a cigarette lighter socket to go in there. You've got that 48 volt 8 amp output. I don't know any things I've got with that but I'm sure it's got a use number 11 is uh, USB-C 100 watt you just, you just push them on DC power is on there now USB power and your AC so that's your AC output here they're just three pin plugs upside down see and I'm presuming that that is so you put the plug in and the cable goes up rather than trails down and infiltrates that one so you've got four of those four plug sockets I'll show you boiling the kettle shortly yes yeah, so you've got a USB-C 100 watt there so there's two of them and then you've got two USB the bigger size ones you know the ones you're all familiar with the five volt things that's what's got on the front there that's the outputs so you can charge a boatload of stuff absolutely loads of stuff right, let's move all this I'll turn it around and we'll have a look at the inputs so here we have the outputs so at the top one you've got the DC output which is direct current now input sorry input this is where you get power from. You see, you charge it up this way. Oh, that's the uh, that's the AC. Bear with us. Let's get the right cable. DC output there. So you've got the two holes, and it just matches up. Matches up there. Screws on, nice and tight. Plug it into your car socket. You know your 12 volt in your car, and you're off. That'll charge that'll trickle charge that when you're driving. 
So when you arrive at your destination, you'll have some power. Right, that's that. So it's nice and secure. And you've got the air seat. Let's just fasten that back up there so they don't cross over. The air seat input is here. This is how you power it from the mains power. So I'll show you that in a minute. Again, that's it. That's three pins on that one. So just line them up. Tricky line them up, I can't see really. It's a bit dark. There you go. That's it lined up. Right. Let's tighten that on. And then plug it in. On. Keep it in because I'm going to switch it on in a minute. You've got circuit protector there. That's your grounding screw. So you put it, um, if you want, you can put a, a screw in there with like an earth wire. Ground it to your van or wherever. Have the van, have it grounded and then just so you can screw it in when you pitch up. If you want to be double sit. That's for your battery expansion. That's if you want to plug another uh, charger or battery into it. I think you get the you get the plug with the battery when you buy it the new expansion battery so yeah that's the input so you've got the 12 12 volt dc and the ac 240 for this country that's your input so let's have it switched on and tell you about how long it takes to charge up here we go right we've got it i'm not is off all right you press and hold and it goes off 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 all right it's plugged in to the the side there i'll just plug it i'll just switch it on at the wall light comes on display comes up and you get input there so there you go it's kicked off there now input is coming up you know it eight or nine it's on reduced right normally it's about 1200 but it's on reduced because it's at 97 percent so if this was down 50 percent that would be 1200 going in 1200 watts going in okay so when it gets up to about um, i think it was about 95 percent it was charging up to 95 percent and then that dropped from 12 1240 or however many it was it dropped to 840 so it reduces the charge going in and i think it's so it doesn't overload it you know when it's uh when it's fully charged but yeah that's charging away there now that's gonna right so that's it we'll just let that just to bring it up again just press any one of the buttons see 98 percent already let's put one percent in just in that little one minute that i was talking so it does charge quite fast I think when I first got it, it went from about 36% up to 100%. Um, I think it took about an hour, hour and a half maybe, to get up to full. You've got three modes. I've got the um, app on the phone. I'll get that. And you can have it on Eco, Turbo, Turbo Charge. There, see, it's dropping down. It drops the power input again as it gets near 100%. And that's a fail safe so it doesn't overload it so it doesn't go over a hundred and trip out all your circuits so that's quite a good thing this is brilliant i've had this in the van at the weekend like i said ran the fridge charged up my devices um and it was running it was running for a good few hours with the fridge when i went camping i had the fridge on overnight so it had about 12 hours and it used to uh, i took it down to about 70 percent in 12 hours and that's with a fridge the fridges draw a lot of power so there you go so what we'll do next is right I'll unplug it and then we'll boil the kettle we'll boil the kettle because not many of these can boil a proper household kettle so we'll do that next point of interest I've just plugged the air fryer in 190 degrees it's drawn 1233 1232, 1231 watts. So that's powering an air fryer there. <laughs> we'll just knock that off. Here we come with the uh, the kettle, right? So that's that's enough in there for a, 
a cup, a cup of tea and a half. Right, let's see if it blows it up. Kettle on. What's that drawing? That is drawing a lot of power. 2663 output. Remember, it's only a 2000 watt, 2400 watts supposedly, and it's pushing out 2650. And look, that's boiling that kettle. No problem. Beast. Beast. Power's gone down 2%. <laughs> We'll come back when that's boiled, see how long it takes, right? What time is it now? 17.05. Right, 17.05. Back with the, uh, this is the, the app, the Blue Eddy app. So you just, you just use Bluetooth. You can go offline, you can create an account if you want, I haven't yet, like, so it comes up AC200, finds it. Just connects to it there. That's drawing 2.6 kilowatts. <laughs> Uh, it's eating the battery though, that's the thing. If you want to boil the kettle, it's going to cost you, what was that, 6% battery? But yeah, you got all these settings here. All this, all these different settings. I don't know if you can make it out, it's a bit bright, isn't it? Not kidding though, 17.07. And that kettle's just boiled there now. Alright, so there you go boiled the kettle. Don't think it was happy about it but it did it. Loads of different settings on there. As you can see the kettle eats the battery light but you could have a hair dryer in there, anything really. Whatever you want. So we will now take it to the van and put it in situ. The thing I will, I will mention is right it is very heavy. It really is heavy, you've got to be careful. You lift it by the lift it by the handle there, use your knees, don't use your back. Otherwise you could be in bother. So we'll just knock it off for now. Off it goes. And it was so quiet. Did you hear the fans? It was really, really quiet. It's a nice bit of kit. So yeah, if we'll come back in the van, I'll show you that it's sat in the van in situ where it goes. Boiled the kettle. Two minutes. It took that two minutes to boil that kettle. There we go. So this is where it sits in the van. Just at the door there. And when I pull this bed out, it comes to about there. So I just turn that. Just turn it around. Turn it 90 degrees and it faces in. So you've got all that. This is for the fridge. You've got the DC output. Ugh, I can't reach. DC, switch it on. That's the fridge on. So I've got USB charging that, USB charging that, the DC charging the fridge, and I can have the laptop plugged in. I haven't brought it with us, I haven't brought it out, but this is the cable for it. So it's handy for filming, uh, for charging up. I use this grip for the uh, GoPro. This has got the C charger there, so I can charge that up. Charge all your batteries, your film and stuff. You can basically do it, like, as you're on the go. Plug everything in, just make sure it's all secured down. And you can charge everything. That's drawing 61 watts. 60 watts. And that's powering that Samsung pad, the phone, charging it, and the fridge the fridge is what draws all the power 67 watts it was drawn there now 65 it's fluctuating it's probably just just the way it is but yeah good like my mate Rob will love us for saying that it's good like I've got another USB there which is for the for me watch but you know you can only use two USBs but how much stuff do you need to charge up so that's it that's where it sits in the van very neat, just sits in the corner there, so it's not too big. I mean, if you've got a, a T6 or a bigger one, you know, that's not going to take up that much room. Also, it's very handy to put, put your stuff on, like if you're lying in bed, if you just have the single, or even with the double out, you can use it as like a little worktop. Just don't have any drinks on it, yeah? Because you'll spill them and 
that would be a disaster. <laughs> so that's my thoughts on this blue I've been using it for a while now. I've used it on a couple of trips away. And I must say, it's a beast. It's just unbelievable. Only negative thing I can say is how heavy it is, but I mean, that's because it's so big and powerful. There's another negative. It's like hard to plug them in. It's hard to get them plugged in. This is in the way. I don't know if I'm doing something wrong, but you can't push the plug all the way in. So, you might want to look into that. I don't know if I'm doing something wrong, but I could not get the plug in properly there, so that's a bit of a downer. I'm sure it fits, probably just me. That one's in okay. See, that's, that's charging up. Oh, that's got power, it was completely dead. So there you go, Blue Eddy AC 200L, 2400 watts of van power. Great for your little camper van, or if you go on a site when you're in a big tent with the family. You want all the kids charging their laptops and all the games and all the rest of it. Phones, phones is a favourite for charging. I mean, you can plug in, you can plug in two plugs there. You know the ones that take the USB socket, so you can't charge more than two USB things. You can actually charge six. And the C-type ones are more common now, so same thing. So yeah, it's good. I like it. I do like it. Now. It might not be the cheapest, but I think in the long run, it can save you a few quid that. I was thinking about getting a leisure battery in here. Leisure battery underneath there, with all the wires coming out and like a, a control box at the back here. 1100 quid, quartered. I was like, oh my god. So this does away with that for now, like. And like I say, I've got the, the DC charger there. That will just reach through there, through the gap, and I can plug it in as I drive. So I can charge it up via the van with this cable here. That's really handy. I used, that, I used to do that with the other one. So there you go, Blue Eddy. Any questions, feel free to ask. Links will all be in the description. I'm not technically minded, so I can't give all the watts and voltages and outputs and all this power. It's all in the manual. And it's all online as well, really. This will be released the 13th. I think I'm releasing this video on the 13th, so it should be out. If you want to go and have a look at it, check it out. If you're into this sort of thing, camper van, RV, anything like that. Absolutely amazing bit of kit. I'll be using this a lot. You watch my other van channel. Well, this video will be on the van channel. But you watch, I'll be using this a lot after this. Because it's very, very handy. Alright, thanks for watching. Don't forget, it all helps. Or, oh, up to you. Even that helps the algorithm. <laughs>